Joyce and I are gonna go to the beach and make a driftwood xylophone. Now, to do this, you need to make sure you bring all the right things. First of all, towels. Bring towels even if you're not gonna get wet. Sunblock. Hard boiled eggs. Okay, I got the salt. Okay, good. Frisbee? Oh, well, that has nothing to do with making the xylophone. That's just in case somebody wants to throw oh. it at the beach. Okay. So, the first thing to do when you get to the beach is start looking around for good pieces of driftwood. There's a collection of it here. So we're gonna look at some of these different pieces and test them out to see which ones sound good and which ones sound kinda clunky. Now, the thing is, before you can do that, you need something to hit them with, something to strike them with, something to play them with. Uh, so I picked up a sort of random mallet. Joyce has one there too, which is actually a lot nicer than mine. This mallet is really perfect because it has a lot of weight on the end like a like a real drum mallet that they manufacture so when you throw the stick the weight is all here and then it's thinner where you hold it so here I've got a mallet it's just a nice solid piece of wood about the right size and weight and I'm gonna pick up s some pieces of driftwood and see how they sound how does this piece of driftwood sound here's how I'm gonna test it I'm holding it up I'm going to drop it, I'm going to strike it in the middle while it falls. That'll leave it free to vibrate, and I'll have a pretty good idea of how it's going to sound. Let's try this one. What do you think? Pretty clunky. Pretty clunky. So, we can lose that one. The best pieces of driftwood for xylophone bars are usually between about one foot long and three feet long. The ones that are flat and board-like frequently sound pretty good, but the round ones sound good sometimes too. This one's a pretty good example. Nice tone. The ones that don't sound good are usually split or rotten, or maybe just, I don't know why, but you test them out and they just don't happen to sound that good, and there you go. <laughs> Actually, that one's got a nice sound. What do you think? Yeah. Borderline? Borderline. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, how about this one? That's nice. I like this one. All right, so I like this one, so I'm going to keep this one. We'll start a pile someplace. For the moment, that's okay. our pile. I, I, I don't know if I like the throwing thing. I'm gonna try it on my on my legs here. Let's see. Oh, that's beautiful. that's a good one. <laughs> oh. I think that's pretty good. I'll give it a B. All right. All right, a B. A B, those, those a B puts it in the keyboard pile for me. Not as good as the <laughs> other one. Okay, now we've got our collection of bars, and we've got some towels here. We're going to use more towels than usual because we're going to make a bigger than usual xylophone. A traditional xylophone has a couple of cross pieces that the bars rest upon. And it's better if those cross pieces are are a little bit padded. The bars will sound much better. So we're going to take these towels and we're going to roll them up into cross pieces like this. Okay, we're going to try and gather a bunch of bars that make a nice scale of some kind. So what kind of scale? A major scale? A minor scale? A pentatonic scale? A driftwood scale. A driftwood scale. That's exactly it. Place the bars so that about one-fourth of the bar overhangs each end. So these, in fact, I should have put these a little closer together so that now about one-fourth of these longest bars will overhang. Does that look about right? Yeah, I'm going to put the nails underneath them. Oh, good idea. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it helps if they're about like that. So, Joyce, this one's making a dual pitch. Do you like that or do we get rid of it? It's got that kind of funky sound. Because it's thicker, yeah. But they need, they'll sound better if they overhang a little more. So either we move these in closer, or we, or we move them farther up the scale. mallets that are 
are just sticks. You be sure to hold them really loosely because when I play the drums, they're skin and I don't actually play them very hard, but with sticks that you're hitting with a, another stick, if you're really loose and you just throw the stick at it like that, it really bounces. That's the best sound you're going to get out of your driftwood. So if sometimes they dance out of position like that, because they're not held down in any way, they're going to move out of position and they won't sound good when they get off like that somehow. So just pause for a moment, put them back in position where they belong and they'll sound good again. <laughs> <laughs>